Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. For this project, I have to tell you a little bit of a story. Because about a year ago in the Christmas Ornament Challenge, I offered a free Zoom demo to the top three clubs for participants who participated in the, in the challenge. It turns out that the Puerto Rican Wood Turning Club, I won't say it in Spanish, uh, was one of those winners. In fact, one of their members took the grand prize last year. So I fulfilled my part of that bargain and did a Zoom demo for them. And during that demo, we started talking about woods available to me here in Utah versus woods available to them in Puerto Rico. Turns out they have some amazing woods and they were kind enough to ship me a box with several pieces. This is the first from that because, well, I have to turn them and have to let them dry, but anyway. So with one of those pieces, this is Tika wood, I decided to turn this small lidded container. Uh, it is pretty and the wood is fantastic. So let's turn this lidded container. All it needs now is some chocolate candy. This is Tika wood from Puerto Rico, about six by six by four. With the size of wood and the vessel that comes to mind, I have very little wood to waste. So I sanded off one side and glued on a waste block. Just one clarification, my waste block is incorporated into a threaded wood faceplate. The waste portion is a sacrificial layer glued to the faceplate. The chuck in this picture is solely for clamping pressure. When the glue is dry, I also cut the corners. One advantage to this practice is that I can take the project wood off and on the lathe multiple times without worrying about positioning it back exactly back in the chuck. In the end, after the waste block is parted off, I face off the waste block to make it ready for the next project. Now the wood is ready to go. The Live Center provides insurance and vibration dampening. It does not take long with my bowl gouge to trim back the wood. However, I note that the wood is not quite dry. For this project, I want a lid from the same block of wood where the knob is recessed into the lid. So I measure and mark the minimum diameter for a pression, compression hold for my smallest chuck jaws. Then with the parting tool, cut a recess, large and deep enough for the jaws to go into to hold the lid. I rough cut a bit of a chamfer on the top edge, then decide where to cut for a 45 degree cut into the wood to cut out the lid. This is a tough cut with this parting tool. The height of the tool requires that I widen the kerf to allow the tool to cut deep into the wood. And it does need to go completely to the center. The wood on the interior does not matter because it will be cut out anyway. However, I have lost a fair amount of wood at the rim, probably less than if I had made a straight cut for the lid, but it was rough going. With the lid successfully removed, I can shape the exterior of my vessel with my bowl gouge. I will let this wood dry, therefore this is left rough. Let's do some work on the lid. The lid is mounted to my chuck in that recessed tenon I cut early on. I am removing the excess wood from the lid left from when it was parted off. The last thing to do is to form a small tenon that I can use later to hold in my chuck. The bowl portion is back on the lathe. With a box scraper, I clean up a recess for the lid to seat into, then continue on to hollow out the center. 
The box scraper works best when it can cut an edge and not as well into solid wood. So after marking a target depth on a 3 8 inch drill, I will drill the very center. Then back to the box scraper. This is good enough for a rough hollow. I will be back later after the wood dries. I let the wood dry for four months. It lost about 7% of its weight, but that includes the already dry waste block. Drying was worth the weight since it did develop a couple of small drying checks that I treated with thin CA. The wood is back on the lathe, still on the original waste block. Now I need to trim back any deviation from the drying and, in particular, trim where this lid will seat. Now the wood is harder and I am cutting more gently. In this situation for the exterior, I prefer a shear cut with my bowl gouge. Next, clean up the interior. Since the vessel is now defined by its exterior, I need to reduce weight by reducing the wall thickness. I'm using a round carbide scraper with a long, heavy handle. Back to the lid. This will be tough due to it being recessed into the top. I cannot directly see any joint. I need to trim the perimeter to fit the outer rim. In addition, I must relieve it a little more inside to fit the inside opening. In addition, the lid is too fat and heavy, so I take off my original tenon and cut a new one. This is mostly spindle gouge territory. This lid is now reverse mounted again onto that small tenon. This enables me to profile the lid starting with a spindle gouge, moving to a half inch round nose scraper and then to a quarter inch round nose scraper for a finger grip under the knob. After sanding, perhaps I am premature in applying walnut oil. After all, the base is still attached to the waste block. However, I am confident that I can blend the bottom in when it is ready. When I started this project, I anticipated that I would use my largest jaws in an expansion hold. However, I am missing a set of the right size jaws. So let's see if my wood soft jaws can fill the gap. I have the same fitting issues as with the lid, but the soft jaws with, have a lot more latitude. I fit the outer po lid portion, then cut a small profile for the inner lid portion. Perfect. Then with the project mounted to a revolving threaded live center, I can part off the waste block. Then gently trim back and add some character to the bottom. Then sand and blend in a little more walnut oil. That completes this lidded container. All that it needs now are some chocolate candies. The grain pattern is pretty. The lid was a bit difficult to execute but works great. I wanted it loose anyway. I really like this vase, and thank you, Puerto Rico, for the beautiful wood. More from your wood later.
Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions, and every week I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. A face shield saved my life, and if you use yours, I'll be able to see you again next week. If you don't, well, my condolences to your family.